Now the best part about RVing in the winter in Canada is that the outdoors become your own personal large beer fridge. I can see cheering for me. Same baby, there's to work to do. Plenty of dreams to dream after you. I know what it means to love completely. I'm blessed to be among the lucky few. Who has had everything after? Well, hello. RV fans and tubers, thank you for tuning in. Well, today we're going to talk about survival techniques to RV full time in the Canadian winter or anywhere in northern latitudes where it's cold. Because I know a lot of you RVers in Los Angeles love to take your RV maybe up to Big Bear, but you're scared to, or people in Sacramento or the Bay Area want to take their rig up to the Sierra Nevadas. Now, aside from tire issues and change, you know, that you might need to get up to, you know, Interstate 80 up into the Sierra Nevadas, that's an entirely different issue. But what we're going to talk about is how to keep your rig going as long as it's not too too cold but freezing because uh, it's getting below zero here at night about minus three to minus five celsius so that's below 32 fahrenheit for you uh, american folks that aren't on this, the uh, metric system yet but the number one thing that you guys need to first consider and do is your water line here don't leave it out don't leave it plugged in it's just going to freeze up Unless you spend one or two hundred bucks on a uh, heated water line, which is probably not worth it, just fill up your tanks, folks, and then take your hose, store it inside. I throw it in the front cab so it doesn't freeze up because the front cab always stays above zero anyway. Now, unless it's too cold, I like to leave my gray tank valve open. Now, I don't recommend that if it gets, say, you know, closer to minus 10 Celsius or colder because then uh, you're gonna have potential pooling in your lines they're gonna freeze create an ice plug in your line and it'll back up into your tank if it's really cold close it add RV antifreeze to your gray tank and it'll mix with whatever discharge you have of your gray and provide you with some cold weather protection now don't worry about your tanks freezing up most class C RVs the water tanks are on the inside and as long as you have sufficient heat on the inside of your RV at night your water tanks are not going to freeze now when it comes to the hot water heater I like to keep my hot water heater on all the time that completely eliminates any chance of it freezing if I kept it off now the cost of a little bit of propane to keep hot water on at night when I'm not using it is much cheaper than fixing any problem that I would have if I actually had a frozen hot water tank and it got destroyed. Now for inside the coach, I like to use my radiant oil heater because it's very quiet at night and it won't keep me up. And it's got multiple settings. I can set it for whatever I think it's gonna be for the night. But that's just not gonna cut it alone. You're gonna need another source of heat. Now, when I come home at night, sometimes, and it's a bit chilly, I will run the furnace, but I won't run it for very long because propane is very expensive and it just uh, will run out in about four days in the cold. So there's no point in using that if you have electric heat. Now, that's assuming you're in a part of the world where propane is more expensive than electricity. Here in British Columbia, we're very lucky. Electricity is quite cheap and it's only about less than seven cents a kilowatt hour plus tax. So um, and uh, actually I'm lucky I don't actually pay for my electricity here so that's a, a nice advantage for me. When it comes to the uh, washroom or as I like to call it the turdlet, <laughs> I hope I don't offend anybody by that, that word because it's, it's quite a quaint <laughs> word that I like to use. Now for the turdlet to prevent black water freezing, um, assuming it is not really cold and what I mean by extremely cold is below about minus 15 minus 30 Celsius what I like to do is I, I like to dump my black tank and I will throw in a bunch of plumbing antifreeze into the bottom of the tank and a little bit added as I go. And what that does is there's a, a mixture of uh, you know waste and antifreeze in the tank which will prevent any uh, extreme expansion in the tank while I'm using it. And I just literally dump it down the drain with a mixture of a little bit of water. And as a secondary precaution, I have a second source of heat going 
because my, my tanks are slightly elevated and very close to my floor. I, I run a electric heater in my bathroom and I keep the door closed and I keep this on all the time. And a lot of the heat dissipates into the tanks to provide an extra measure of uh, protection. And uh, I'll actually keep my vent in the bathroom closed during the winter, um, except when I'm showering, which of course then you have to run your, your, your fan to vent any of the moisture because you don't want any moisture buildup in your unit. And speaking of moisture buildup, occasionally during the day if I feel there's a bit too much moisture in my unit, what I will do is I will fire up my air conditioner in the winter. Now people will think, well, why would you run your air conditioner in the winter? Well, two reasons. You want to make sure that unit works in the summer when you need it. So the seals in it, you don't want them drying out. And you also can use it to suck moisture out of your unit in the winter. So I'm going to do that right now. Yeah, it's a bit noisy, but what can you do? Well, that should about do it from uh, here. It's actually a beautiful day during the day, probably about between plus seven and plus 10 during the day quite often. Uh, very clear, so at night it gets very cold. So thankfully that allows my sewer lines and stuff to thaw out during the day uh, in case I have any buildup in the lines. So in the meantime, stay safe. And I'll see you next time.